cool awesome so in this one we are going to go ahead and dive into affinity photo so yeah let's go ahead and do that so here we go um here we are we are in affinity photo uh, and i got this guys uh, a picture and all you have to do is go to um right here on the side it'll say stock sorry first things first let's make sure you are set up for success so my resolution is uh, I'm not gonna recreate it but I'll show you what I did so I go up here to file new and then I'll bring in the little drag box here I want the page width I want it to actually be 1080 and then the page, the page height to be 1920 you want your DPI in case of this po poster to be 72 we're just doing web um, if it's print we want to do 300 DPI so yeah let's go ahead and just keep it 72 it's usually either 72 or 300 the higher that it is uh, it's gonna be more performant heavy so if you have uh, I made the mistake as a beginner when I would create files I would always set a 300 even though um, I wasn't using it for print and that's a that's a big um, it's unnecessary so don't do that the color format uh, we're gonna keep it the standard RGB 8 just stands for red green blue and the um, an 8-bit color space um, the higher the bit the more color colors that you're gonna see so there's 8 16 and then 32 which is HDR and that's really high dam high dynamic range which is if you're doing things like um, well HDR stuff, astrophotography, uh, other things like that. Most of the time, you'll be okay at uh, RGB eight. Keep it simple, um, because the more colors that you have in an image, the higher the file size is going to be. Um, cool. So the color profile, just keep all of this the same. But basically, each one of these profiles uh, works off different color standards. Um, for instance, Adobe RGB. Uh, usually they can have more options with colors and stuff. And I can probably um, bring up a, a diagram really quick. Let me let me show you what what I mean by that. All right, cool. So I just did a quick Google, and I will show you it right here. But basically, um, here it is right here. Uh, it's just a general. <clears throat> sorry. It's uh, a profile that describes the color attributes of a particular device by defining the mapping between the device source and the profile connection space. Um, simply put, every device that displays color can be assigned a set of profile, and these profiles define the color gamma, gamma, gamut that will display by these devices. And I'll just kind of show you really quick. Well, I won't spend too long what a color gamut looks like and this is basically just a color spectrum um, and, and these triangles represent I mean I think this is the best example uh, right here I actually have this monitor monitor the bit Q monitor it's what the device can represent properly um, when displaying um, the colors so the more uh, of a triangle space that you have the more color and more dynamic range that you have with the colors so this is a lot of information. Don't get, don't worry about it. Like I said, just keep it uh, like it is an sRGB. And the reason we do that is because most devices support it. And then you're gonna hit um, create. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> Finally, moving forward. Now that you have your document, you're not gonna see uh, this gentleman right here. Um, you can download it in the um, the files attached to this lecture. If not, you can come over here to the stock and you're just going to type, uh, I think I just typed red shirt or something, and you're just going to kind of scroll through here, and yeah, there he is. And, you, and all you do is click him, and then drag him in. Give it a second. Um, don't click when this happens. I've noticed there's a bug with Affinity. If you click, see, it starts doing this, and then eventually uh, it, it does import the file. Now, um, just so your screen and my screen look the same, um, at any time, if you lose uh, a window or anything like that, uh, that we need, like the brushes, the effects, or anything like that, uh, you can come up here to view, and then go to studio, 
and then select the one that you don't have. Like if your brushes go away, you just click brushes and then there you go, we're back where we are. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, come down here and reset my studio. So mine looks what with um, the way yours most likely looks. All right, and then, um, yeah. So in the next section, I guess, we're gonna kinda softly go over um, some tools that we're gonna use, and then we are gonna get started on the actual poster. So yeah, let's go ahead. Alrighty, so now uh, we are here. We're gonna go ahead and start um, formatting and moving things around and kind of prepping our overall scene um, to to mimic the her poster. So the first thing that we want to do is always have a reference, right? So since we're going for the the her poster, we're gonna do file open and we're gonna go ahead and click the her poster. Uh, it'll be in the source files as well and then we're going to open it. Now, as you can see here, um, you can. these are the two tabs. This is your main image that you're working on. Make sure you save your file um, in an appropriate name. Mine makes no sense <laughs> right there. Um, but yeah, so all you need to do is get the her poster, the tab, and then drag it out. And then come over here to the corner and then bring it down like this. And the reason we're doing this is just so we can have a reference. Um, and the cool thing about having this window open and out like this is that it will always stay on top. So if we click and move around, we can st it'll still stay on top. It's very similar to an artboard and Affinity Designer, um, except for it's always in your view. So this is a great way to use um, perspective. Okay, cool. So now let's finally um, get started. I, I believe that's everything. So yeah, um, another image that I do have, uh, I forgot to talk about, is these green eyes, because we're gonna use these um, to mask out and put over this gentleman's eyes. And so basically, um, I did the same thing. You're gonna come over here to the stock tab, and then we're just gonna type in green eyes or singular, I can't remember, yep, it's uh, right here. Just grab it and dra drag it in, I already have it, so I don't have to do that, um, or it'll be in the source file. So finally, um, enough talking, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and dive in. Okay, cool. So the first thing that we wanna do is, um, we actually wanna mask out this gentleman. So um, we're gonna come up here uh, to the tools bar and don't worry about this this ruler these are this is my this is my personal ruler uh, if you did want to add rulers um, they do help uh, you just come over here to view and um, right here show rulers and that'll just kind of enable or you can do control r that's just if you want rulers and the cool thing about rulers is you can select it and then you have a guide right there all right, cool. Anyways, focus. So we're gonna come up here to the brush selection tool, uh, or we can hit W, and we're gonna go ahead and start using it. So when you're masking, um, let me just kind of bring it to my face here. So when you're masking, the main thing that we want to focus on is um, clean, crisp lines and understand the difference between soft and hard edges. Now, typically, a hard edge is going to be, and I'm gonna kinda illustrate this really quick. A hard edge is usually gonna be um, right here. So, <clears throat> let me see a good example, because there is depth of field being right here. So this is gonna be a, a hard edge. So we need to understand that there's a hard edge right there, um, and not make everything soft on the edges. A lot of beginners when they start masking, including myself, and I still do this sometimes, is I overly do um, the soft brush. Okay, so yeah, so and then a the soft edge, we usually come back and do that if we want to simulate depth of field or like for instance, you see on this, this edge right here, it's kind of soft and it blends in gradually and it's not just a hard uh, separation. 
Um, so that's usually when we do soft edges or if we're doing things like a big movie poster where um, like the Avengers poster, let me go ahead uh, and show you that example really quick. All right, so here's kind of what I'm talking about. All right, so this is kind of what I'm talking about. So the these two areas, they're going to be um, they're going to be soft, right? They're going to be soft. You just want to kind of have it. You don't want everything hard uh, right here. You just want to kind of have it just blended. And usually there's some kind of see that like he just kind of softly blends in with the galaxy and stuff like that. You don't want it to be hard. Uh, in certain areas and you kind of uh, gain this ability with time to kind of differentiate a hard and a soft edge okay moving forward so now that um, let's go ahead and what we want to do is mask out the main um, character because we're going to add a pink background so we're going to get the brush selection tool which is the easiest tool we are going to I'm going to kind of go over really quick what the brush selection tool is and what it does so there's two modes, there's add and there's subtract. Subtract is going to um, subtract away the selection and then add is going to add to the selection. So what you wanna add, pretty self-explanatory. We have snap to edges. Typically I like to keep this on um, and unless I have to go back and manually do it. But snap to edges, this is it turned off. It just is just like a normal brush, you know? And then snap to edges will find um, using, I guess the AI or something, it will find and try to snap to an actual edge. You see how it's a lot more snappy, similar to a grid. Okay, and then soft edges, there's, um, it'll try to smooth out um, the edges when it's going around. So this is soft edges turned off, and it'll be a lot more uh, abrasive, I guess, than whenever it's turned on. And you see it trying to kind of do some anti-aliasing and stuff like that. Alrighty, and right here is the refine tool. Now, <laughs> we're not done yet, so we'll get to the ref uh, refine tool whenever um, we are ready. So let's go ahead and yeah, mask them out. All right, so we're gonna hit the brush selection tool. I use my drawing tablet, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that, but you can use uh, a mask, I mean, uh, your mouse. Um, if you like so yeah all right so we're gonna go ahead and go around first I want to start on the edges and when you're masking take your time okay take your time the more time you spend doing it um, typically the cleaner it's gonna be however affinity has some great tools that make masking super easy um, because of how um, often editors, photo editors um, use it. So one of the um, tools that I'm using, I'm gonna turn uh, input history on really quick, is when you're selecting, if you wanna quickly deselect instead of having to come up here and hit subtract, you hold the Alt key and then it'll subtract the selection. And then you can just basically paint on here and uh, do it. Now glasses are one of the hardest things, glasses and hair are one of the hardest things to mask in my opinion because of how much time it, you need to spend with it. So you know we're just going to kind of go, um, so inside the glasses we want to hit alt to do subtract and take away from that mask. Okay, And then we're going to do the same thing on this top part and make sure you're really close and you really kind of not too close but close enough you know where you can kind of see the difference now this is a great um, if you can do this mass you can do probably about any mass because of the fact that when you you when you um, take a picture if you have control you want the subject to be on a um, plain background so when the software is like masking the brush selection tool, it can clearly co see the contrast between the subject and the um, the background. So since it's not solid, there's like a lot of noise going on in the background with these leaves and stuff. It's really difficult, and you'll encounter this a lot when a client or somebody sends you 
um, a photo and they're like, hey, you know, I want this mask or, you know, you're masking something and it's just in the real world. And so not everything is in a studio. So it's good to have multiple tools to kind of um, to help you along the way. However, as you can see, Infinity is doing a great job so far, um, and that's partially to do bec um, because of that the image is um, blurred. So yeah, so you're just gonna go ahead and and go along, and I'm panning with the middle mouse button. If you push the middle mouse button, you can pan along and uh, go with it, or you can come over here to uh, the hand tool right here, right there, and push or push H, and it'll do the same thing. Alrighty, so cool. Now this hair is really tricky, so we're gonna lower the brush size, and I have a little button on my drawing tablet that allows me to do that. However, if you don't have a drawing tablet, um, we you do the the bracket keys. The left is going to lower it and the right uh, open bracket is going to, or close bracket is going to um, to uh, increase the size. So yeah. Alright, we're just going to go around the hair. We're Right now we're just going to worry about the big parts of the hair and we will get the flyaways and I'll show you how to get the flyaways um, in a bit. So just focus on the big sections big chunks of hair. Alright, and this back part right here. Alright, and uh, control S to save. And make sure you save and save often because Affinity does crash. It is a program. It's not perfect. It crashes less than some other programs that I know. But, um, yeah. So, cool. It looks really good so far. And so look out for these bumpy bits right here. Now if you see these, you can um, uncheck that snap to edges and then just kind of eyeball it and go along to kind of counteract those bumpy edges and just kind of go along. Those bumpy edges will make it look very, very, very much like you um, are an amateur. Photoshop guy and it just or not Photoshop uh, photo remover guy sorry Photoshop is like coined the term all right cool so we're gonna go around and and smooth things up that's pretty good all right cool so in the next lecture we are gonna go over um, how to do the little strands of hair hopefully <laughs> so yeah Alright guys, welcome back. So we are going to quickly do the um, single strands of hair. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, back to the drawing tablet. And we're in. No, I'm just kidding. Alright, so what we want to do is instead of... Yeah, so we're just going to kind of come up here and then we're just going to like just do a general selection over these strands of hair. Alrighty, just like that. And you're thinking, what? You know, you're gonna get the green, the green grass, or yeah, the the green background in and stuff. But just hang on. We will work on it. All right. So now that we did that, we're gonna hit the refine button. Now the refine button is really interesting because it goes over the whole image and, and sees if it, it did a grid selection. Now there's two, there's a couple of versions that I use. Um, there's overlay and then black and white. I don't really use the transparent, but this is the transparent. This is kind of what it's gonna look like when you take away the background. Um, there's a black and white, which is the one I use. Uh, so it can kind of clearly see the difference between the mask the subject and the background, the part that I'm taking out. So the black is not going to be in, the white is what we're going to keep. And cool, and then the white is just basically the the background just with the black or white or back background. White or black background, sorry. Okay, cool, so we're on overlay. So on overlay, um, some things that we want to do. 
So what we want to do is make sure on the adjustment brush, there's four ones, but we're only going to use three. We get the mat, the foreground, the background, and the feather. So the mat is just kind of a mixture of the foreground and the background. It's just going to allow the computer to kind of decide which one's which. So we're going to just make some brush strokes over the areas that we think, hey, look, we need this to be recalculated. All right, and you kind of can see it already improving, um, but it's not perfect, so don't <laughs> expect too much. And kind of use a, a big general brush so it can sample in um, multiple areas of it. So we're just gonna kind of go over it and just kind of let it calculate and stuff. Um, yeah, and so and we're gonna come down here and do it with that one too. All right. So now we're going to check how that actually looks. So we're going to do black and white. And this is what I was talking about, how you can kind of see um, how it overall looks. So we did get some pieces of hair right here. Now there's a problem because with this picture, if you look, it's blurred. So the computer is having a really hard time trying to understand. Um, you can see how it's kind of like mushy and stuff right here instead of being sharp because the picture is blurred. So on this part right here, we're gonna hit background and we're just gonna kind of do it a little bit right there and that's gonna slowly remove the background. Now, if we lower the ramp and what that means is um, how close it'll come over. Now you can see the overall effect um, of it kind of coming back, right? So a high ramp is gonna go outwards and a low ramp is gonna go inwards. So yeah, so let's just kind of lower the ramp, look at it, and feather's going to soften the edges, and so is smooth. So smooth and feather, smooth is a lot more aggressive than feather, You can, as you can see the, from the mask right here, and then feather is just kind of like overall going to sharpen or uh, soften the mask. We don't want that. So let's just kind of look at this, and then border width is going to go over the border, obviously, and create a border. All right, let's back that up. And let me see what that looks like. And you just want to kind of play with these values until you kind of get something that you want. All right, so so far that looks really, really good. So we're just going to go ahead and hit, you can actually change the output to where you can create a whole new layer or keep the selection. So I always keep it on keep the selection in case I need to manually adjust it. Um, you can create a new layer, create a new layer with a mask, um, which is basically the same thing. So we're just going to keep the selection for now, but if you want to do like advanced stuff, um, that's what you would want to do. So as you can see, there's <laughs> some errors being had with it, and that's okay we can just go back and fix it. And that's what I was saying where it's just, it's not perfect. Um, let me see. Yeah, so I might have, uh, I might have um, did it a little too far ba farther back and that's okay um, with the ramp. I get a little too happy with the ramp sometimes. So let's try it again. And really it's just kind of try trial and error. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead, come over here again, come over here, and we're not going to touch it this time. We're just going to see what it looks like by default. And this is just to show you that um, a lot of this stuff is really tri trial and error and what you think looks best. So we're going to head, head Alt and we're going to correct the overall mistakes that have happened. That looks somewhat okay. It's pretty messy, I'm not going to lie. So we're going to go ahead and fix these little holes and now we're going to manually fix uh, some more of these selections. You could just get away with these, just leave the flyaways, but I just want to show you that it is doable. So we're going to hit the lasso select tool and then up here it says polygonal and that's going to allow us to basically do like a brush select if you can see right here. And that's just going, uh, we need that um, and make sure it's not on new, but we're going to change the mode to add. Uh, right now, I'm just going to do subtract, 
and take it off and then add because this first the free hand um, it'll just go away unless you hold shift uh, when you make a selection we want to keep that going so yeah um, if you notice this also has a refine button as well so yeah let's go ahead and get these flyaways and we just want to kind of eyeball it and honestly uh, it's really not that important uh, to keep these if you don't want so you know I, I wouldn't feel bad if, if you didn't keep these these flyaways and stuff and we're just going to go ahead and go around just kind of roughly do it and we'll hold alt to delete or to subtract and each time you tap it makes a new point so that's on so I keep tapping so much all right cool all right so just for sanity's sake we're gonna go ahead and move forward okay so don't get too lost in the mass all right let me just kind of redo this part right here okay cool so yeah so now we're gonna right click um, and we're gonna hit rasterize and that's gonna convert the image into um, pixels so we can move it around so we get rid of the image data and we just keep the um, we're, we're gonna go ahead and just keep the color data and stuff so we're gonna hit control C or command C and we're gonna copy it so we can kind of work non-destructively all right, cool. And we have the uh, the main part of the mask. Now, if you see, there's obviously edges and stuff that we need to clean up, but you know, no worries there. We are going to clean that up uh, on the next lecture, and I'll show you how to do it. So yeah. All right, cool. Welcome back, and we're gonna go ahead and clean these edges up really fast. We're gonna come over here and hit mask layer. All right. Now that we have that selected, we are going to hit E or you can do black and white and get the brush tool and black black is going to erase and white is going to add back cool and we're going to do that a lot I'll, i'm just going to briefly go over that because we're going to do it a lot more throughout the course so yeah so let's go ahead and we're going to have the hard brush and we're just going to go along and um, kind of clean up these messy areas. Alright, and I decided that I don't want to keep that flyway because it does not look overall good, so that's fine. Alright, and I'm actually going to switch my brushes, so I'm going to come over here to the brushes, and this is when I'm going to do a soft brush. We're gonna go along, do a soft brush. Any any area that you know looks like it shouldn't be there, we're just gonna kind of take it out like the green patches, and do not worry too much about this masking because ultimately we're gonna add some color on it, and you you know you won't you won't see it. Alright, so on those, be careful. Around this neck, we're just gonna kind of come up and take that apart. And like I said, the longer you spend on this, the better it usually comes out. Um, unless you're like me and then you end up messing it up. So it also kind of simulates the depth of depth of field on the side parts. So, yeah. All right. So yeah, this is a lot harder mask. Maybe I should have started you guys out with just a, a simple background and stuff. But yeah, so overall it looks pretty solid. So I'm kind of soft 
open that right there. And yeah. I mean, because if you notice his facial hair, you can see the facial hair, which is great. That is great. The glasses look pretty good. Come in here and clean this up. Alrighty. Cool. Let's clean that up. All right, cool. And we're done with uh, his mask. So now we are going to go ahead and add the pink background. And in the next section, we are going to do that and then move on to the eye masking and adding that in as well. So yeah, see you then. All right, cool. Welcome back. Um, so a quick little side note. At any time you need more explaining, you can come up here to uh, help or push F1 on the keyboard and then you will get answers fast. So if you want to learn more about the refine tool, you type in refine, hit enter, and there you go, right here. And it talks about the different things, determines the softness, opacity of the transition at the edge of the selection, drag the slider to set the value, and smooth determines the curvature of the selection's edge, drag the slider, set the value. So these will kind of go into a lot more detail um, and just show you how to better uh, get the edges and stuff out and stuff like that yeah they did that wolf really good huh that's great all right cool so now we're going to go ahead and uh, make his background. So we're going to come over here and I'm going to use a rectangle. Hit the rectangle tool. You can use any shape that you want, but a rectangle just makes sense because the background is a rectangle. So yeah, we're going to hit V to do the select tool. And then now that we have it selected, we're going to come up here to the um, arrangement. Or you can right click on it and hit arrange. And then we can say move. Uh, to back and that's on the furthest back Now you don't really see the difference now but if we come over here to the color uh, we can set the color and then bring up the saturation right here now if you're not seeing this um, with the color sliders you just need to change the mode because I think by default it's on RGB I don't work really well in RGB I usually say in CMYK or SHL and that's just hue saturation and luminosity so yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and get the color. And it looks like a, a deeper red. Yeah, something like that. Cool, looks nice. All right. So it looks okay so far. We do have some, some artifacts going on up here, but don't worry, we will fix that. So now moving on to the next stage, we're gonna go ahead and do the eye. So I already have the eye imported. And what we're going to do here is just brush select again. The eyes going to be a lot easier. We're going to go ahead and select all the way around because of how clear the um, pixel is. And I'm going to use, I'm going to try to use the method that I talked about in um, the docs here and see if that, that works. Turn down the ramp a little bit. Turn it way down. Feather, feather up, Rat down. Okay, didn't really work for me, but okay. So let's go ahead and get around the edge, or I can just select it like a normal person. Okay, so I'm gonna head and snap to edges and go around. I'm going to take soft edges off really quick. Alrighty, and we're going to do the same thing that we did here. We're going to rasterize and control C, control V, which makes a copy of the layer. Alright, and then hit escape to deselect. 
and we'll just kind of clean it up a little bit here so we're gonna make a little mass layer underneath it so we can keep it overall and we're just gonna kind of smooth out the, the roundness of it soften those edges you can also do this um, with the smooth setting and the brush selection tool um, it just depends on your workflow and how you work I just always end up doing it this way because I know I work with a lot of mask and stuff so when you're um, doing selections and stuff you can just go ahead and already have this done but you know there's a thousand ways to do it and this just works for me so yeah, let's go ahead and make sure you select the actual image and not the mask and then we're going to go ahead and um, as you can see he has very nice eyes very nice green eyes so we're going to go ahead and uh, hit V to get the selection tool and we're going to drag it <laughs> now it looks like he's crazy so we're going to lower the opacity a little bit and we're going to try to pair up the pupils alright and we're just going to hit uh, alt and then drag and that's going to make a copy alright now we have two looks good so far now we want to blend it in this is why I said it's important to have that mask now we want to have it um, clipped out right here so we're just going to go ahead and select the mask and, uh, mask and erase around the parts where his eyelids should be alright same on this side Oop. Make sure you have it selected. Go ahead and erase it. And take your time with this, you know. I'm always rushing. I'm not that patient, but the patient people make the most beautiful art. They really do. Alright, cool. So, it looks really good so far. Uh, yeah, looks good. Alright, so now we're going to kind of raise the opacity back up a little bit. Don't get too crazy with it. That looks good. Now his eyes do look kind of off. Let me just make sure. When I first did this, yeah, they are a little off. I'm just going to kind of resize it here. Make sure we have the mask selected. Oh, that was, that was pretty good. Alright, now I'm going to double check on this one. Yeah, let's kind of erase a little bit more on the sides. Looks good. Looks good. Alright, so now. Alright. And. All right, and then in the next section, we are going to start doing the final touches. We're gonna do the red spill around the character and then jump in to develop persona. And after that, we will add the text and then we will move on to the next project. So cannot wait to get started. Alrighty, welcome back guys and this part of the course thing lecture we are going to go ahead and do the red spill over his shoulders and on his body and kind of help him overall blend um, better into the surrounding pink so yeah let's go ahead and get started all right so now that we are uh, in here what we want to do is uh, let me see if I can do this so I'm going to select the in the layers panel over here. We're going to go ahead and select his eyes and himself. And we're going to hit control G to group them. Um, we're going to make a copy of it. And then we're going to hide the copied layer. So we work non-destructively in case we mess up. We're going to hit rasterize, which is going to convert everything into one pixel. So now he is one pixel. And the reason that we're going to do this is because when we add spill we want to just clip into him. So how are we going to do that? So we're going to create a new pixel layer. And as you can see, um, since it's clipped into him, uh, it won't go outside. So we can kind of keep it stay and move along. And it looks like, it, you know, it's a part of it. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So using the 
uh, that color. We're just going to kind of go along the edges of where he is and then just kind of bleed in that color pink. So he kind of looks more like he's more inside the environment. Now we can lower the opacity to about 20 or 25 percent up here in the brush settings and that's just going to allow us to better um, paint and blend uh, the surrounding areas. All right, and really spend your time with this if you can. So we're gonna go into the erase tool and make sure your brush could, when you have the eraser, you can also change the brush. Make sure it's gonna be a soft brush. We're gonna start soft uh, and then we will come back and, and, and do hard if we have to, but I don't think we will because the source, the reference does, uh, doesn't look like it. It's very hard, so yeah. All right, we're just gonna kinda go around And then just kind of lightly add pink. You just want like a little pink. You just like less, less is more. So just kind of lightly add pink on the sides right there. It's already starting to come together. I mean, and that's the main thing. When you mask things out, make sure that they're blended, that they blend in within their environment. And there's several ways to do that but this is just the way um, that works for me. So I'm not super psyched about this, so we can kind of come back and take off this, this red. Just on the shoulder parts. Yeah, we're just kind of add some red. You just want to like, add just touches of it just barely any so this is why it's important to have a low opacity just lightly go in and then add to it don't start with a lot right so it's just like cooking when you go to make a steak you know and, and you're going to go season it or if you're making a salad or something you don't start with a lot of salt you start with a little bit of salt and then add a little bit more over time because you start with too much salt you can't take any away right it's already in there and in this case you can't erase it uh, however, it, it just doesn't make sense to start with a lot. Start small first and then go up. It's a lot more efficient. All right, cool. So now that we have um, that, uh, overall it looks really good. Just little touches uh, on the outside here. And we can kind of come into the individual strands, lower the brush size, and then lower the erase opacity to about 20. And we'll just kind of pull it back like that. And this is just going to add shadows to our hair and give it more of a definition. Right, so we're kind of giving him fake hair. And when I'm shading, I do not use presser sensitivity only because it adds such a layer of complexity that we really don't need overall. So yeah, we're just gonna kind of go in, better define the hair, come up around here, kind of define the hair up here, and yeah. All right, it looks really good. Looks really, really good. All right, cool. I just kind of look over it. All right, and now in the next section, we're gonna do, we're gonna take all this and jump into develop persona. And we're gonna kind of edit with the colors and other things like that to give it a lot more movie-like feel. And yeah, so I'm excited. Let's move on to the next lecture and let's go. All right, cool. Now, thanks for coming this far. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use everything that we have and we're going to jump into develop persona and yeah let's go ahead and get started so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tag the pixel layer that we want to edit and we're going to create another copy so what we want to do and what i mean by tag is just a um, 
select the same type. So, <laughs> yeah, so what we're going to do is come right here and then just make it um, green, right? And this is just, when we're working with multiple layers, we make sure you right click and then come down here and then so you can select a color, pick it whatever color that you like. Um, it's good to have colors or naming. Um, you can even, I guess I could just name it, right? Just double click and name it and say um, base base layer or something, right? So you can name it or anything like that. I color coordinate everything, it just helps me, right? So we're gonna go ahead, before we do the develop persona because it is kind of destructive, um, we're gonna go ahead and make a, create a copy. So we're gonna do control C, control V, and then we're gonna hide the under layer, cool. So now with that layer selected and make sure that it is selected and we're gonna change the um, color as well. We're going to change it to orange. With that layer selected, we're going to come over here on the top left, not the liquify, but the develop. All right, cool. Now that we're inside the develop persona, the first thing that we need to do is kind of mess with the colors. This is all eyeballing, um, <laughs> in my opinion. It's just moving sliders around and just finding what best fits you. Uh, practice the K KISS, which is keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> so just always try to remember with the salt metaphor. Start small and then add to. Don't over contrast, don't over saturation, don't do anything like that. Just kind of keep it simple and add a little. It's the tiny things that make the biggest difference. So yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So first thing that we're going to do is check out the exposure. So the exposure slider is pretty self-explanatory goes up and down and um, yeah we don't really want to mess with that so uh, yeah so then we have the black point the black point is just going to deepen the black values or lighten them and then we have the brightness pretty self-explanatory lightens it or doesn't contrast contrast is what I used to love staying in but not so much anymore too much contrast it's too poppy, right? It's it's too like intense. All right, Control Z to undo. Clarity. It's going to work with the details. So this is a lack of clarity, and this is a lot. You can kind of see uh, how he looks overall more detailed and stuff on the face, which I love clarity. So yeah. So what we want to do here is we're going to come over here to the white balance. Check out the temperature. We're going to give him a more warm tone. All right. And then come down here and then we are going to with the saturation we're going to pull it back just a little bit just a little bit see this is too much saturation we don't want him to be orange right so we're going to pull it back we want him to be a lot uh, more tan so the vibrance vibrant is how many colors um, are overall there it does not mess with the saturation it just adds more depth to the overall colors. All right, let me kind of bring this temperature down just a little bit. We don't want to be cold, but we want to be a little warm. All right, details, let's look at the details. <laughs> All right, we don't want that. The lens is just going to work on distortions, and we don't want that. And then let's do a split toning. I do want this, though. So. All right, we're going to... Cool. So this is going to add a, a much more filter-like look. So I think that looks overall good. So we're going to go to the shadows and have it on a more pink side so that the, um, the shadows are going to be pink. Highlights. Let me come over. You gotta be really careful with the highlights. All right, it looks pretty good because now it's <coughs> it's overall um, <coughs> blending. Now, <coughs> if you wanted to, I guess work dynamically, we could undo everything that we just did right so I'll just kind of cancel this 
and then come back in to the develop persona and now when we're in the develop persona over here on the overlays if we hit this add brush overlay we can paint in the area that we want to be um, affected by the develop persona when we're editing it so for instance when I'm doing this I want everything on him to really be edited but his eyes right because we worked really hard on making sure that the eyes are the right color and they're you know they're perfectly the right color we don't need to add anything to it so we're just going to kind of keep his eyes um, uh, away from it right so we're kind of I believe it's this way. Let me just double double check here that this is correct. Yeah. All right. So what we're gonna do is go ahead. But there is a problem. Um, the problem is that <laughs> it limits you on what you can actually edit. So, and I have no idea why they do this, but whenever you just can't edit that much on um, the overall thing. So, back to what we're doing, we're going to kind of do it this color, which looks nice. We're going to come up here to the exposure. We're going to raise the exposure just a little bit, right? Then we come down here to the clarity. Oh, see, like I said, I'm going to let you have the clarity, but that's okay. So, this looks fine. It doesn't match directly, it's a, it's a lot more faded but I like the overall look but we'll we'll drop it down just a little bit all right all right so we're gonna hit hmm all right we're gonna hit develop cool so remember when I said we made a copy and that's gonna be the base layer so now this is going to be a little bit more advanced what we're gonna do next right so well, the first thing I want to do actually is we're going to add a live layer. And this means that we can dynamically change it without um, it being destructive and just being kind of set in stone. So I'm going to hit the live layer and we're going to come up here to clarity. See the thing that I wanted in the first place. And then we're going to up the clarity. See, that's a lot of clarity. I just, I, just want, I just want him a little bit more detailed so it looks a little bit more HD. All right, cool. And now that we have that, what we're going to do is uh, right click. Now this will be destructive and we're going to rasterize this layer. All right, cool. So now we want to go ahead and mask this layer. Now the reason we're going to mask this layer <coughs> is because I want to keep certain elements uh, a different color. So if we kind of come in here and paint around a shirt we can kind of see um, the difference uh, and I think I kind of overdid the the clarity so I'm just going to kind of bring back the clarity a little bit all right looks good all right so um, with the base layer selected we want to I'm sorry we're going to right click and rasterize the top layer and then we're going to go ahead and mask and by doing this, we can kind of erase the top layer and expose the bottom layer, which has no effects applied to it. See, it's a lot colder, the bottom layer. Now, you won't really see it too much because the opacity is really low. Okay, there we go. And you know, it's not a huge difference. But I do want to keep his shirt a more cold temperature. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I think it, I think it blends nicely. So we're going to keep doing that. All right, cool. And I want to intensify his eyes just a little bit and also fix this problem that I'm seeing on his neck right there. So we're gonna actually get that, erase the neck, come into the base layer, and this pixel layer, um, we want to erase of the opacity and then erase it. 
this guy come in and erase it. And you see I'm just like constantly coming back and correcting stuff. Because you end up seeing stuff later. So let's go to 10. All right. Cool. So I would say overall that looks okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and create a new adjustment layer and it's going to be levels. And this is just going to allow us to have a little bit more control with the contrast. We're going to lower the white opacity or white level, I'm sorry. All right, and then we're going to do another mask, but this time we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to do a pixel layer on top and then we're going to do mask below. And by doing this, this allows us to invert the changes. So you don't see it until you paint it in, which is really powerful. So now we come over here to the, I'm sorry, the white selection tool. Let me make sure I'm painting the right color. Sorry, the opacity is too low and it's throwing me off. All right, let me make these levels a lot more extreme. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're just hit E and we're gonna go around. And this area where his eyes are, we're just gonna kind of paint in those bright levels. Awesome. I think that looks great. I think we have to stop now and add the text before I get too crazy. So let me just kind of reiterate what I did because I did that kind of fast. But on this levels adjustment right here, we just, we created a new levels adjustment. We then hit this little dot right here. We made the white level come down. We pull it past the back part of the histogram, which looks like it brightens the image. And then we create a mask. We inverted the mass so that it takes everything away because like if we take this off see it's all there we just kind of keep it to where it only shows a little bit so that now we use that and we paint in the areas that we want to see so I hope that makes sense um, because we keep we don't keep anything but the area that we want to see hopefully that makes sense <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, in the next lecture, we're going to finish it and add the text, and then we'll be good. And I'll show you how to export. All right, cool. Welcome to the final lecture. You made it this far. Thank you so much for um, kind of tagging along, and hopefully you understand a lot of things. Remember, uh, if you need a further explanation, hit F1 and type in different areas that you need help with and stuff like that. Like color management, sampling, all this stuff. All right, cool. So now that we're here, let's go ahead and add the text. So above everything, make sure it's above, layering is important. We're gonna come over here to the artistic text tool, drag it out and we're gonna write her. All right, and we're gonna change the font to a more thick font. I use int a panty or whatever. If you did um, want a font, um, if you did want a font, you want to come over here. Uh, you can just look at Google. Uh, da, 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 da. Just do free fonts and just click one and then just, you know, this is where you can get free fonts or any, just any site that has free fonts and then you download the, um, the TIFF for .tff file and then if you're on a Windows machine, you hit run and the command and then you type in uh, fonts. So in the search bar, you type fonts, hit OK, 
it'll bring up all the fonts that you currently have installed on the machine you unzip the package um, and when you do that you're just going to drag in that file into here and it will auto install I have no idea how you do it on Mac so please forgive me um, you can just google it I'm sure there's an easy tutorial on how to do that it's super simple most um, of the time so yeah we're going to go ahead and select all of it uh, and then make it that white color hit the select tool right here move tool and then hit the magnet to enable snapping put it right here all right and the spacing we want to fix so we want to select all and then hit uh, uh, alt and then the arrow keys will tighten the spacing between the letters alrighty and now that we did that we want to grab this and we can do alignment align center alright and then hit pen tool drag it across and then make sure that the stroke is white we'll widen it so up here where it says stroke the width we're just gonna open it up just like that and you can change other things like the cap which is the end which is if you want it round or just straight and we're just gonna make it just straight like that all right and we're just gonna kind of eyeball it but you can hold control with it selected let me see um, control with it select I just had it or maybe shift I can't remember either way it'll okay yeah okay so do you, if you use the arrow keys it'll sh and you move left to right it'll show you the spacing yeah in between luckily it's spaced perfectly center and then yeah so we're gonna go ahead and hit alt drag it up Drag, oops, not this. Drag it up. Hold shift. It'll lock it on the axis, and you can move it directly up. Now this one is actually interesting. It's a different color, so it looks like it's a gradient. The stroke, and what we're going to do is hit G to enable the gradient tool, and the context. We're not going to worry about the fill. We're worrying about the stroke, so we're going to change it to stroke, and then we are going to drag it across just like this and it will gradient towards now we do need to change the colors and the colors are looks like um, are going to be like a red or like a pink so we'll go ahead and change that to pink and then it goes into like a blue or something so you just select it to add another node and then that blue goes into like a sky blue And then that sky blue goes into a green. Oh, we'll just make the yellow. And I'll add that really quick. Yellow is actually one of the hardest colors to make. Okay, yellow. And let's see what we got. This goes into a green. All right, and now we made that little top bar right there. All right, and now we want to come over here to the opacity and lower it. All right, and then for the names, uh, it doesn't matter. You can do your name, your friend's name, uh, whoever. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter. I'd say uh, Kool-Aid. Man, <laughs> for the first name, and then we'll do Batman. Yeah, just fictional characters. 
Alrighty. And then we'll do the and, and over here. So we'll just do, we'll type and in all caps. Then we're gonna just kinda lower the size of it, the font size up here on the drop down. We're gonna drag it up. Scale it. Normally don't, you don't wanna scale it because it does stretch. But it's okay, we're just kinda. All right, and then right here, we are gonna do, I'm trying to think of uh, another name. Dang, I'm running out of names. Uh, Dragon Man, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll just name that. Uh, name another, Terry Washington. I really hope this is nobody's name, you know. I'm just making names up. Alrighty, and then this last part, um, uh, lollipop, 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 McGee. Cool. I think that's how you spell McGee. I don't even know. Spelling was not my strong suit. All right, let me just kind of. I'm going to re-raise this opacity. I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light or hard light. Hard light. Yeah, hard light. All right. All right. It looks pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, let me uh, just do some minor touches here and lower the width of this. All right, and then come down here and let me <laughs> try to change the name up a little bit. Uh, we'll here or something. <laughs> there you go. Looks nice. All right, we'll raise this one up a little bit. All right, and then we're gonna add the name. We'll say your love story. All right. And with this, we wanna do the select tool, hit the gradient, pull it all the way across. This one, this can be fill, because um, it's gonna do the fill of the font. And we're gonna come over here, change the color to like a blue that kind of blue and we'll make it that kind of blue too but just like a little liner all right and we'll pull it up all right and here's and then and there's all that little text right there and that one we were going to use a frame text tool this allows us to do a lot of text. And yeah, so what we're gonna do is just type random stuff, random stuff. Now I'm just gonna <laughs> And it's backwards, cool. Oh, actually, okay. Did I misspell random? Oh, okay. All right, and then we're gonna change the color to white. Font's okay, but the size is not. It isn't. Cool. Change the size. Make it centered. Raise that. Variable these heights, so, or font sizes. So I'll just randomly pick some and make some bigger. I have no idea what these are called. I've made movie posters many times, but I am not sure what these are actually called. So yeah, just kind of randomly pick some. Did I really mess up that stuff random? That's so funny. All right, looks pretty good. Now if you wanna get rid of that red stuff, just right click and then go to, um, hold on a minute. Control A to select all. And then I think it's in spelling. K. 
cannot see it to save my life. Let me see. Parrot, uh, ignore spelling. All right, so you're gonna hit ignore spelling. All right, and then we're gonna select all these. Just kind of lower the opacity a little bit. Your love story. You can, can, can probably barely see that. Eh, it's okay. All right. Cool. Looks pretty good. Increase the spacing a little bit. All right, and you're done. Now, if you want to export this, um, a quick tip when you're exporting, you just want to select all uh, and hit Control G to group them. I'm sorry. Um, select all the active layers. Control G to group them. Control C, Control V, and then we are just going to right click and rasterize and put it into one pixel layer. And the reason we do this is so that whenever um, you export, I'll show you really quick. This is how you export, by the way. So you come up here and you do file and you do export. Um, you want to do JPEG or PNG. Uh, those are usually the main photo types. Um, you want to do JPEG best quality. Um, and then up here with the resample, you want to do Lancos 3 non separable. Now, the reason we do this is because these are all algorithms on how to, um, I think it's like clean up or anti alias or something. You can look into it. But basically, each one is more complicated and it takes more processing power. So, when it, I think it's um, the way it handles compression. So bilinear is the sim simplest, it's the fastest, but it gives bad results, especially when you do uh, PNG files. So if you have a, a transparent background, you'll see sharp edges when it should be any a list and very smooth edges. So to prevent that, I learned that if you use, uh, it takes a little bit more time, but it delivers the highest quality and the most accurate to your results. Furthermore, if you rasterize your image, it prevents artifacts. For whatever reason, if it's if it's if it's not already rasterized and converted into a pixel layer, if you export it in a group, it'll it has a high probability of creating these little artifacts and these little things that are unattended or uh, yeah, you didn't want that in the image. So just go ahead, flatten everything, and then get it ready, and then save this file off separately. And um, yeah, so thanks for watching this far. Um, I do have another course after this, um, and we're going to kind of do warm bodies and get a lot more in depth with the overall uh, clipping and stuff. So yeah, let's go ahead and move forward. And yeah, let's get started.